Hey everybody, Stephen here from Six Clicks TV. Uh, welcome back. It's been a long, long wait on August 6. We finally got the Australian Government Cyber Security Strategy 2020. Huzzah! Uh, great, yes. But we just uh, have some questions, uh, which is why I need two internationally respected veterans to help me out. Our special guest today, Matt Tett, Managing Director at NX Test Lab, as well as Board Director at the Communications Alliance and Committee Member for Standards Australia, joining our Head of Cybersecurity, Andrew Robinson. Welcome, chaps. Hi, folks. Good day, Stephen. How are you? Thanks for Very having good. us. Very good. Pleasure, pleasure. Uh, Matt, if we uh, can go to you first, uh, I saw your article up at innovationoz.com titled Baseline Metrics Needed for Cybersecurity. So let's start there. Uh, the strategy seemed to be very uh, top line to a Neanderthal like me, but what kind of baseline metrics would you like to see uh, in there so we can understand whether it's successful or not? Yeah, I think um, taking the history from the 2016 strategy, um, yeah, it is very top line. I don't think it's an easy job to be in government, whether setting the policy or carrying out the policy. So they generally do seem to be quite um, high level and, and overarching. But I think from 2016, what we learned was that it's all well and good to set a strategy, but if you're not actually measuring the outcomes of that strategy, sometimes the value can get lost along the way. So I think one of the observations I made with the 2020 strategy, while there is a nod to metrics over a couple of pages sort of buried down towards the end, there's no actual setting of a baseline or requirements or even to demonstrate the value of those deliverables. So, uh, Andrew, over to you. If there are no metrics, um, I can't help but wonder where they plucked the $1.35 billion figure from, uh, particularly when we're talking about protecting a trillion dollars worth of uh, economic wealth uh, or more. Uh, if the government do follow up with some metrics, can you see any unintended consequences if we hit them? For sure, Stephen. So really that comes down to overspending or underspending. So if, we, if we're overspending, and spending more than we really need to to solve this problem, then we're not really representing a good investment and a wise spend of, of money that's coming out of the public purse at the end of the day. Uh, but perhaps more relevant to cybersecurity, which is you know does warrant uh, a good level of investment, is that we might not be investing in in the right areas. So so Matt uh, nailed it when he said it would be good for the in industry and and people in the public to see those metrics so that we know exactly where the money is going to be spent and whether it's going to deliver that uh, return on investment that we so need uh, so badly need. But there's also uh, kind of a, a hidden cost of, of also being uh, overzealous with, with, with some of our uh, ambition to, to address this problem, and that's that we might actually hinder the ability of our own tech companies here in Australia to operate on a global platform uh, on the global stage and export our technology. So we want to make sure that at the same time we maintain our competitiveness. Matt, um, I'd like to use this opportunity uh, whilst you're here, because it'd be a shame to not tackle IoT while we've got you. Uh, two questions mm -hmm. around that. Do you think that the strategy addressed securing the role of IoT in the future? And number two, just regarding security mark certification, where do you see that area going? Uh, should we be looking at more rigorous certification of professionals or some kind of liability, as we may see for product in critical applications like IoT? Yeah, thanks for raising that, Stephen. I think um, from our, our perspective, and I chair the Workstream Enabler 3 for uh, the IoT Alliance Australia, which is focuses on cybersecurity and network resilience. I think from our perspective, it's good to see IoT actually getting a seat at the table with the 2020 strategy. Um, the, the end of last year, Home Affairs came out with, um, I guess, consumer guidelines or draft consumer guidelines around IoT security, which sort of sets a good framework. It's very similar to the work that's been done over the years in, in the UK. So it's good to see that the Australian government isn't necessarily reinventing the wheel, but we're adopting um, what the UK is doing with obviously with some Australian bent, a um, bit of a nod towards the Australian privacy principles. And that seems to be carrying through with the 2020 strategy. And I think IoT security really is going to be the next um, beachhead in the war against um, hackers and criminals. So I think that's one of the biggest um, 
aspects of our, our day-to-day lives. Now everyone's got smartphones, everyone's got smart devices, people are buying speakers and installing them in their house to for convenience, but really functionality also comes at a, at a cost and that cost is privacy and potentially safety as well. So it's up to us in the security industry to install, ensure that the vendors are at least delivering good levels and good practice when it comes to cybersecurity, safety, and privacy and, and unfortunately the track record to date with information technology hasn't been so good and I think we can't lose that with with IoT. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it comes about. And touching on that when we're talking about vendors is as you mentioned the security mark um, certification and labeling program. So essentially it's Australian born and bred. It's something we've been working on since 2006 ironically, um, but really last three years, we've been focused hard on getting that to, to market and ensuring that vendors have a, a fair go and independently having their their claims tested so that uh, consumers, whether they're government procurement or you know industrial automation or even consumers in their, in their homes can rest assured that the device has gone through a series of tests to make sure they do meet good practices when it comes to embedding security by design and safety by design and, and adhering to potentially protecting people's um, privacy. So yeah, the certification's good there. Um, so that, that really focuses on the product side, but then yeah, the human side is also critical. So when you look at things like um, providing certification for individuals as to their level of achievement, there's a lot of um, different, I guess, industry certification programs and yet to see one really come through for IoT itself, but I'm sure they'll be um, they'll be hot to come. The universities are very focused on cyber at the moment. I'm sure there's components in their courses which cover IoT, but um, not a specific IoT security certification yet for individuals. Andrew, I know that um, you and I have talked in the past about the plethora of certification schemes for people and products. ISO, ISM, CCSL, IRAP, etc. Uh, but I haven't asked you yet uh, if you think that that kind of labyrinth could be made better and smarter for everyone's benefit. All right, maybe I should be saying that they're they're fantastic and everyone should have them because not because I sell certification cert- uh, services, but because I have so many myself and uh, I might start to question why I got so many certifications uh, if, if I didn't think they were any good, Stephen. But at the same time, they really only offer an entry point. I know every time I achieve a certification I thought would be my ultimate outcome, I go, well, that's great. Uh, but what have I learned out of that? There's really so much more. Uh, so they're, they're really, they make sure that you've got a baseline understanding of a given domain but they, they don't really have a habit of telling you, who, you know, who's, who's really good and who you should trust. Um, so that's something that we should look to change and maybe improve upon. I'm not sure being spoilt for choice with so many certifications is a, is a good idea. I think having a bit of variety so that you know, I, yeah, they could do IoT, they could do penetration testing, they could do risk management. That's kind of useful. But if we have too many, I think customers who are relying on these certifications can easily get confused. So, Matt, what do you think about uh, people and, and product certifications and how can we get the best out of them? Yeah, I think I think you're right. I mean, in terms of certifying individuals, I think it's, it's valuable, especially in information security. It's an ever-changing landscape. So you can't just write one course and it's set and forget and you learned it 20 years ago and you're still practicing the same principles today so it it. does move yeah (laughs) damn it it does move with the the technology and i think that's one of the key key things is making sure currency in certification and and making sure that you know i guess the consumers who are who are looking to to those trusted experts and those certified experts have have passed that and it isn't just passing an exam and ticking some boxes it's also having that real world experience and the practical knowledge to add to those common body, bodies of knowledge which you learn through the the theory it's practical and it's and it's a theoretical thoroughly appreciate it managing director at nx test lab matt tett and six clicks head of cyber security andrew robinson we'll catch you next time here on six clicks tv cheers